So after after we found out the, all the sequence, so you can proceed to to generate the phylogeny. Okay, so this, hopefully this one is entertaining. <laughs> yeah. So, <coughs> actually I generated this slide when I was uh, interviewing here as well. So, so phylogeny. Uh, phylo like to means tribe in Greek. Uh, the last, uh, <coughs> uh, the, 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 J E N Y seem to come from the genetics of birth in Greek. So <coughs> basically we're trying to use a molecular sequence to influence how different species are organized. Okay, uh, I guess uh, <laughs> yeah. so if if we just look at the DNA sequence of a primate, what we have is just we can just generate uh, this kind of a hierarchical uh, organization of the species. So in this case, we can put chimpanzee uh, and human as a bifurcating pattern of the one group, and gorilla will be uh, out, outside of this group. So this one will be the outer group, and this these two will be the subject of study. And if you want to study how uh, uh, chimpanzee and human diverge, you, you can use look at the fossil record, say, when, the, when those diverge, and then dating those, use a DNA sequence for dating the divergent sequence. And uh, in fact, oops, <coughs> in fact, well, how, do, how do we know uh, people migrate from Africa like uh, I'm not sure, a hundred years, a hundred thousand years ago, and then the second migration like uh, fifty thousand years ago, something like that. There are two out of Africa human migration. How do we know that? It's also because of the dating. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, those trees are same. Two, three, four, five. Are those three the same? No. Yeah, it's one and two is a group of one and two is a group here, one and three is a group on the other side. So basically if you look at the tree, we usually we don't present phylogenetic tree like a real tree, we actually present it uh, uh, either parallelically or upside down for some reason. I don't understand. Yeah. So, <coughs> so the bifurcating pattern, if you see two groups are bifurcating, that means they are diverging out of one common ancestor. So one and two here share one common ancestor here, they're from here, and then uh, I guess five will be the out group here. So. <coughs> And again, in, when we present this one, the uh, horizontal branches will only, only come for the length, and the vertical one is just for uh, uh, presentation, for style. Uh, here's actually a real example with phylogeny really helped uh, us to, to solve a real world problem. Uh, in two 2003, uh, I don't even remember what SARS, oh here, severe acute respiratory syndrome is SARS. Uh, SARS is a, a contagious disease is spread by the viruses. Uh, I guess this is the initial, when, when you see some kind of a fluid and the, the <coughs> infection in the lung and then the disease gradually spread uh, in, the, uh, in the end you will see uh, at the later stage you will see the lung will be infected much more this is uh, maybe a 
some treatment on that. I don't remember the detail later. So it's, uh, it's actually a very fatal disease. About 10% of the infections of patients actually die. So how, uh, this actually uh, is, it happens <coughs> roughly, it's, and if, we, if people didn't stop this and trace, find out the origin of this, it can be a, uh, probably going to be like 19, 19, 1980, like an influenza pandemic, but eventually this one was contained. So it's initially, because this one really looked like pneumonia, so, so for, for a while when it first started in the southern part of China, uh, my family actually lived there for during that time. Actually. Initially, people saw it just pneumonia, and then they, they use antibiotic, which won't do anything since the virus. Uh, so, so the so initially, even the physicians didn't think that's a, a terrible disease. Uh, one of the physicians went to a attend a conference in Hong Kong and and Hong Kong is a metropolitan city and they are, this this physician stayed at a hotel and <coughs> with people traveling all over the world and then the disease started uh, spreading. So those guests actually travel back to Canada, Singapore, Taiwan and Vietnam. <laughs> This is actually, uh, it's actually amazing how people reconstruct this. <laughs> so, I guess that's the physician A, and those are the people stay on the same floor with him. So, that's him, and he admitted to the hospital, and he uh, passed it on to other, I guess that's healthcare workers at HCW, and those healthcare workers pass on to other patients, this one also went to hospital. This one went to hospital. Okay, this one did. Those I didn't try. This person, this actually very interesting person. This person is a WHO a research scientist. And he fell ill on a flight to, a, I forgot, probably to Bangkok. But during, on the way, he fell ill and he realized he actually knew it's an infection disease, so he stopped the fly at the Hanoi. And he also tell the physician say he must have a contagious disease and they shouldn't treat him as, as a regular disease. He should, he should be isolated. And that person actually he died from that. But he actually the isolation from his uh, a sample that could provide one of the sequence to, to narrow down the viruses. So that's uh, this is this is a, to me this is one of the best examples. Someone with knowledge and realize and sacrifice to die for this. So those people totally ignore what <laughs> I guess, but it's still passed on to others. And like this, there are people travel to Singapore, then to Europe. Uh, one person back to the U.S. Uh, one person to Ireland. In fact, uh, I have the Google, I think I have a Google first demo of how this is right. Let's see what that can get found in some way. Yes, it's still working. Yes, uh, this must be United States. So you see that one person travel, <laughs> travel from the Far East to the United States. <laughs> this is a one, one spread of the SARS virus. And you, you see there are so many uh, things here, that's when the, <laughs> that's where the, <coughs> sorry, the virus started. How, how do I, uh, oh, no, you, okay. Do they know the origin of SARS or how it, how it get in? <coughs> Very good. Uh, we will, that will be the next few. How do, uh, well, 
how do you know the origin? <laughs> how how would you infer the origin? Let's say this is a flu. Well, uh, cat flu. Let's say. Sorry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> There's a new kind of flu. How do we know where, when, where it is started or when it is started? I don't think it would be, uh, I don't know, probably to determine like what are the businesses from locations where they found it. So um, I think like for this, for this. Time. Thing. Yeah. Basically time. When, when is the first case, second case? Right, you, you construct the temporal history. You know, in this case, it's a real time. Uh, <coughs> the model can tell, can tell when, when the case occurred, right? So you can trace that. And the sequence is just a way to verify. I mean, we can also use sequence to verify, but any data has to confer with what your observation. Now, that say your observation, your observation can also be wrong, so it's cross-validation. So, I guess this is Hong Kong, uh, that's Vietnam, Taiwan, Singapore, yeah, Singapore, so, so it, it, that's how, it, and there are some other samples, how they are. This actually is constructed not by uh, time, it's actually constructed by sequence. So the, the, those connections are actually calculated based on sequence. So, and, but here's a key point. Based on the DNA sequence, those connection also consistent with what we, what's the reported event. Right? So, so people also say, I travel, uh, I stay there. But when you construct this event, it's consistent with the DNA sequence. So that's a, that's a message. Uh, uh, where you? Oh, that's probably Europe. Yeah, this is Europe. That must be. Uh, this is so. This this must be German. Yeah. So so <coughs> that's Alpine. That's probably <coughs> Italy. So this is Germany. So that's that's a person. Oh, is that from Singapore? Let me see. Actually, it comes from the uh, no. So the, the because the Singapore come from Hong Kong and so it's actually connected to a between between Singapore and Hong Kong. But, but in reality, the one person carried the virus from Hong Kong to Singapore, then to Germany. But the sequence actually constructed to a, a, a node between Singapore and Hong Kong. But, that's, but I guess the sequence doesn't tell exactly, but it's consistent with the spreading pattern of the actual event. OK, so it's good. This universe is still working. I, you see, I'm using my old computer because somehow the Googlers have a new version, a new version doesn't work. <laughs> so, so I'm using my old laptop today. So, okay, so so here's a, a, a case where the sequence um, uh, historical event really can be used to reconstruct the how a virus spread. Uh, that's it. <coughs> And uh, here's uh, people publish the data on this. And they, actually there's a lot of people uh, infer how the virus spread. And they all use sequence information. In fact, uh, here's a phylogenetic tree construct using the virus uh, sequences. So, and so I put the location and also the when, when those samples are isolated. So, so this will be that physician who traveled to Hong Kong in February 21st, 2003. And those that the sequence isolated from the virus at Hong Kong. So, so it's, what can you, what kind of conclusion can you draw here? Yeah. So, I guess unfortunately he's a he's <laughs> no culprit. <laughs> Is the unknown way spread the virus? <coughs> the rest, you can, well, you can well, well, this can draw all those sequences uh, are derived from this one. That's basically what this graph here, <coughs> this tree tells me. Those sequences are derived from this one. And this one, the, 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 this one will be the isolated in December 
that's where this position work. So, so you can tell, we, we can, since this one is the oldest one, we can use that one as the a, as a outer group to root in this tree. So we can tell this one is an ancestor for all those. And this one start, and this one probably also came from this. So, so the time is temporal information and the, the uh, sequence information are, are, are consistent. So. Okay, here's a, actually an example to, to, to generate a simple phylogenetic tree. If, if the evolution has no mutation, well, actually, then there'd be no evolution. <laughs> if, if there's no mutation, every sequence will be identical. Right. So let's let's start with with one sequence. Say, Spellman is at that. And you can imagine this is a protein sequence. So, <coughs> so basically, this is a if. What kind of a tree will this be look like? Sorry. No. It will be. Who, who can who can who can draw a tree for this? Yes. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, if all the trees are the same thing, how how would the tree look like? There wouldn't be a tree to be alone. Right. Uh, <laughs> I see the differences in the steps. Right. Uh, uh, well, if there's no, I guess. Okay. I guess. Uh, yes. If he's aligned or so. So. So basically. Average leaf is here, so you have a node, you have a ancestor, and you have a node here. Every yeah, every tree will be on this, and if you draw the tree horizontally, there's no distance between them; they are all zero. So every any one follow on the one vertical line. This is no horizontal distance between them. Yes, so I guess you know, we, it is a line. So now let's put some mutation. Uh, I put the two mutation here, three mutation here, and two mutation here. There'll be some difference. Now, which uh, now uh, which one do you think? Uh, which two sequences are are similar to each other? The second, the last two. This two, yeah, because they both have L M has the L M P different. Uh, what? Sorry. Yeah, the first one and the second one have two different. Okay. But the, the first one and this one have all three different. The first one, this one also have. Oh, they also N different. It has three different. Okay. So there's two different here, two different here. That's the two seem to be the smallest number. It's kind of confusing to do to do it this way, so we want to put it on the, the table. That would be called a matrix. So we put all the sequence on the column <coughs> and the row, and then put the distance between uh, distance between them in those cells. So the between the distance between first one and second one is there are two difference um, two. And uh, first one and third and fourth is three. Second one fourth is also three. Third one between fourth is two. So this will be something we call this distance matrix. Uh, the distance matrix is literally a distance matrix. <laughs> and for example, here's the distance matrix between several cities around here. Two hour drive to Chattanooga, two and a half drive to Birmingham, two, two hour drive to Knoxville, two hour drive approximately to, now, to Nashville. And then you can also give a distance here. So Atlanta to Birmingham, two and a half, actually there's a, there's a shortcut here. Nashville, four hour, Knoxville, four hour, and basically put a distance there. And then if you want to use the tree to describe this for cities, how, how are you going to describe them? Atlanta is closest to Chattanooga, so Chattanooga will be too. Uh, that is good, except uh, here uh, with Chattanooga, <coughs> it's considered ancestor. <laughs> no, it's oh. not your part. <laughs> yeah. Well, which of the, the four cities surrounding Chattanooga? Atlanta is closest to 
So it's so because it's a nice Bernie Hay. Who say Bernie Hay? Who say Darksville? Uh, so Atlanta will be uh, have two point five hour drive to Birmingham, four hour drive to Northville. I thought you said you were looking at Chattanooga. No, I'm oh, sorry. No, here Atlanta. Uh, you, you, we, we want to use the tree to describe. Let's do this again. Okay. We want to use the tree to describe Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, and Knoxville. So Chattanooga okay. is just an internal, internal note. It's an okay. ancestral note. And how do you describe these four cities? Okay. We, I, we put this in a tree. So the, any, we have just four, four cities. We put there will be four leaves. So which one will will you put, uh, in a bifurcating pattern with, uh, with Atlanta? Uh, Birmingham. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So, everybody agree Birmingham? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's be Birmingham. Once you put Birmingham there, then you don't have to do anything there. There will be only two other cities left. So Nashville and Knoxville by default will be put there. Right. So basically, if you think about how many trees can you generate, how many different topology can you generate for a four city, uh, for a four node tree? It's just three, three because, points. right. You, first of all, you have to put a, one of them here, right? And then you only have three choice to put one here. Once you put one here, the other two will be defined by default. So there are actually only three kind of a topology for a four node tree. So, so this is basically a, a, a really a distance matrix to, to describe and then use the tree to describe the relationship between the cities. We can do the same thing for the DNA sequence. Well, Protein sequence, those are all protein sequence actually. Uh, S for serine, P for proline, I forgot the E, uh, either aspartame or <laughs> yeah. L is losing. Oh, wait, M for methionine. Yeah, basically, do that actually really. Yes? Okay, so shouldn't <coughs> technically there be like more of a hierarchical system? Because <coughs> the second, third, and fourth have that first L mutation in development? Uh, <coughs> yes. First, I, based on distance, you first calculate out. Well, intuitively, you can see first and second are more closer to each other. Right? This is because they have only two mutation between the two, and three and four also have two mutation between the two. So you can tell three and four and the one and two are closer to each other, intuitively. But uh, numerically, or uh, how the software does it, it basically first calculate the distance matrix, and then based on this matrix, generate a tree like that. Uh, we, you don't have to. We don't have to go to the detail how how to generate, but intuitively you can tell. Okay. So this, based on once you see this, you know one and two are closer, three and four are closer, and these trees seem to make sense. That's, that's basically, uh, for this class, that's so basically this. We're just referring to the distance matrix. What? For this tree. Yeah, so, 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 so you only need to intuitively understand. From this, you can generate a distance matrix. Distance matrix tells you which, uh, what genes are in the same group. If I flip <coughs> one and th three, that that tree won't even make sense. No, I'm not talking okay. about like flipping. I guess I would show it. Uh, like, okay. Like, what I guess that I would have. Ah, that actually, uh, no, because uh, we uh, we know two and three are, are closest one. So we know two and three is a bifurcating one and two is bifurcating, and the rest of them will be connecting the two. If you if you draw this, you actually can you capture the distance. Uh, how about you can do the ball? Oh. Draw the tree. <laughs> yeah. So she actually, she actually tried to draw. It's very good. She tried to draw the tree on her own, but she gave a different topology. But you, yeah. <coughs> oh, 
Why would that be right? Uh, well, thank you. Let me, let me. So once she draw this tree, uh, well, you can actually back calculate. So we know this is the time, and uh, this is basically the distance. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's do this. Uh, let's say when you need it is one difference. This is, oh, uh, sorry. Actually, never. One, two, three. So we know this distance is 1, and this distance, distance will also be 1. So the distance between these two will, fourth and third will be 2, since you have 1 here and 1 here, right? Mm -hmm. So you have 2, and this is 2. And you have another 1, and another 1. So the distance between the second and third will be 4. No, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus <coughs> 1, will be 3. So this is a 3, this is also 3. And the, let's assume this is also one, this other one. The distance between first and second will be two. Three. One plus one. It's also three. And the distance between first and the fourth will be Six. That's two, four, five. Because it goes four, five. So, so it, this basically, if you draw the tree this way, the distance you can't actually rewrite really the distance. That would be a different distance. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so the first in between the fourth, you count the second one. Uh, well, how do we count the distance between the first and the fourth? Right. So the distance between. Oh, I'm sorry. I I calculated wrong. I should have counted this one. It's this and this. It's one, two, three, four, four. Sorry. Very good, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I also counted it wrong. The, 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 the branch length between the first and the fourth will be one, uh, two, three, four. Uh, that one, I shouldn't count this one. It's also that, that's a, that doesn't go to, yeah, it didn't connect them. Yeah. But isn't it four from first to fourth on this one too? Because it's four and then one, yeah, it'll be four from one to four on this one too. Ah, uh, except. Uh, that one, I, I, when I joined, I didn't join too many clock. I joined just for the uh, oh. okay. So if you, if if I, if we really uh, calculate based on this, actually the lens will be will, won't be exactly the same. It will be a little off. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's actually it, it's very difficult to to generate a, a real sequence to be exactly like this, <laughs> but. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very good point. Yeah, that's that tree actually isn't drawn to the molecular clock scale. Yeah. That's a very good point. So, uh, so this is the distance between first and second. Oh, we are really getting to the how this thing works. <laughs> so, uh, oh, yes, we have asked a lot of questions. <laughs> so, okay, here's a. I hope this still makes sense, uh, but the movie, movie uh, there's a new, new one, so, so, <laughs> so uh, here's an actual sign, it's also on your WebCT, although uh, you don't really have to use WebCT, oh wait, wait, it's on the assignment, okay. it's, uh, if you look at the WebCT, it's also, there's some uh, instruction, mm -hmm. but, uh, <coughs> you don't really need to use that instruction. Let me see what a what it is. Sorry. Okay, I thought that's right. Uh, it's probably a good time to take a quiz. Uh, okay, maybe if, uh, before we do this, let's let's take a quiz first. Uh, great. Uh, I think 
are forced by the the Thank you. 